Shortages of natural gas supplies have sent prices soaring in Europe, pushing many, many energy companies to the edge and challenging major industries who rely on the fuel. Now, the shortage is also promising higher heating bills for the coming winter. There are a few key factors behind the energy crunch in Europe. The long winter depleted supplies of gas on the continent. Alternative energy sources are meanwhile tight. Wind turbines at a near standstill in the North Sea as winds there stopped blowing. And Asia is taking up a large part of liquefied natural gas supplies. All of this now as natural gas deliveries from Russia fall. Now, Russia blames infrastructural issues, such as a fire at a processing plant in Siberia. But some believe the country is throttling supply as part of a bigger geopolitical game. Beneath the town of Rheda in Lower Saxony, natural gas is stored deep underground. A subsidiary of Gazprom Germania has filled the gas reservoir to only two-thirds of its capacity. It's normally 90% full in the run-up to winter. Energy consultant Andreas Löschel is concerned about the rise in gas prices demanded by Russia, Germany's largest gas supplier. Russia is a very strategic player in the gas market, which means that economic interests are in the foreground. Shortages naturally drive prices up and are very profitable to Russia. More than half of Germany's natural gas supplies come from Gazprom Germania, a company close to the Kremlin. The company has declined to comment. Gazprom built the Nord Stream 2 pipeline through the Baltic Sea at a cost of 9 billion euros. It's technically ready for operation, but still lacks the regulatory green light. Critics of the project now see a link between the shortage of natural gas and the sluggish approval process. I can only assume that this isn't a coincidence because Russia has plenty of gas. It could deliver. The pipeline capacities are there. Political pressure is being exerted to ensure that Nord Stream 2 can go into operation as quickly as possible. A number of European permits are still missing, and I believe that President Putin is simply playing politics with gas supplies to Germany and Central Europe. Relief could come from liquid natural gas, which is available worldwide. But the liquefied gas tankers are currently on their way to Asia, where natural gas is scarce and prices are high. The EU is left empty-handed. Heating and cooking will be expensive this winter. Alternatives to natural gas are in high demand. This high gas price, this gas crisis, will certainly also lead to a readjustment of energy policy. I think we will consider how we can become more independent of gas, especially in the area of heating, which affects households but also companies. We will look for alternatives, especially green energy and the expansion of renewables. The high price of natural gas could backfire for Russia's Gazprom in the long run, prompting a boost for further investment in the development and rollout of green energy sources. At least, that's the hope. All right, Ashutosh Pandey is our correspondent in Frankfurt. Ashutosh, good morning. What can we really say about Russia's role in these shortages? Good morning, Stephen. Uh, Russia is a major factor there, but it's, it's wrong to entirely bl blame it on geopolitics or the politics around the Nord Stream 2. Uh, look, Russia itself uh, uh, witnessed a very cold and long winters, and it is replenishing its stock now because its gas stocks were actually, uh, they also went down drastically during the win long winter months. So it's now boosting those supplies. So uh, also Russia is actually producing gas at, at its highest level, say, in a decade for this time of the year. So it does not really have a lot of spare capacity to boost output. Having said that, the International Energy Agency does feel that there is still scope for Russia to boost output and supply uh, to, uh, to Europe. And that would actually show that it is a reliable supplier. Ashutosh, we looked at some of the factors, uh, multiple factors beyond this, uh, behind this crisis, I should say. Climate change is also playing a role, correct? 
Oh, absolutely. And these are these extreme weather events. Uh, so uh, typically in summer months, Europe uh, and European companies, they actually replenish their stocks, the gas stocks, which, are, uh, uh, which get diminished during the winter months. But what happens during summers this year, there is like a, a heat wave in southern Europe. So that means there is more demand for air conditioning, which means more uh, demand for power and in return, more demand for gas. So that couldn't happen. Then if you look uh, beyond the continent, there was a drought in Brazil. That's the worst drought in a decade. And that meant that a country that typically relies, normally relies on hydropower had to turn to LNG to meet the short supply. Uh, and that meant uh, the fewer cargoes for Europe. So there are these direct consequences of uh, climate change that's already being felt. Ashutosh, uh, briefly, how are power companies dealing with this crisis right now? Well, they're struggling, to say the least, but uh, uh, we can expect higher prices, you mentioned there, and that will, they're going to transfer those uh, higher, prices, uh, higher costs to the consumers. Some countries have said that they are going to cushion the uh, impact on end consumers. Uh, and some have also turned, interestingly, to coal. Uh, but then coal is also, in short supply, the coal price is also going through the roof. Uh, there was a, a shortage due to heavy rains in Indonesia and uh, Colombia, which are major coal producers. Uh, and, and also because there were shutdowns at mines during the pandemic. So it's, it's sort of a perfect storm for the energy markets, uh, uh, if I could call that. All right, Ashtash Pandey in Frankfurt. Thank you very much.